everyone. Thank you for watching this webinar on Biostar 2 API. My name is Yujin, and today our main topic is going to be how to use Biostar 2 API to add visual face credential to a user. Here's a quick overview of what we'll cover today. First, I'll briefly define what an API is to make sure everyone's on the same page. Then I'll give a quick introduction to our Biostar 2 API and how it can be used for third-party integrations. Finally, we'll dive into the main topic for this webinar, how to add visual face credential to a user via Biostar 2 API. First, let's start with the basic. What is API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. Simply put, an API allows two different software applications to communicate and share data. For example, a client, like a mobile app, can send a request to a server to access data or services. The server then responds with the data, which allows the app to display or use it, even without direct access to the backend systems. In other words, it's the middleman that helps applications talk to each other. Let's take a look at some of its main components. The API client is a software component that initiates the communication by sending requests to the API server. For example, it could be a web browser, a mobile app, or etc. Then we have the actual API request. It typically includes the URL endpoint, which is the access point to a resource, HTTP method that defines the operation to be performed, parameters which are data sent with the request to provide specific instructions, headers which are metadata about the request, and body which is the actual data sent to the server. Then we have the server which receives and processes this request. The server is responsible for handling authentication, validating input data, retrieving or manipulating data from a database, returning the appropriate response to the client. After the client processes the request, it sends back an API response. An API response typically includes status code indicating the success or failure of the request, response headers, which are metadata about the response, and the body, which includes the actual data or information that was requested in the API request. Now, let's talk about Biostar 2 API. Biostar 2 API enables third-party integration with Biostar server and, cap and capabilities allowing you to use Biostar 2's functions without needing direct access through its web interface, making it versatile and adaptable to different system environments. You can use Biostar 2 API as long as you have Biostar 2 installed and running on your system. We offer a lot of useful resources that has information on Biostar 2 API. Specifically, I'd like to introduce you some of the resources we have for Biostar 2 AC API. The first resource I'd like to introduce to you is our Postman documentation. If you navigate to this link, you will find a list of all the AC APIs we have on the left. If you click on a specific API that you'd like to learn more about, it's going to show you information on the API method, the URL, any parameter information, and additional notes regarding the API. It also has a request body example that you can copy and use as a sample. On the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a button named Run in Postman. If you click this button, it will let you import all of these APIs to Postman right away so that you can try out these APIs in Postman as well. Next resource I'd like to introduce is our Biostar 2 API articles page. If you go to this link, you'll find a list of articles. These articles include information on how to use the APIs, 
and any important news or changes regarding the APIs. These articles are going to include a bit more details compared to the Postman documentation and will answer a lot of the questions that might come up while you are using the APIs. I highly recommend checking out our resources if you run into any inquiries while using our API. Now, let's move into the main topic of today, how to add visual face credential to a user via BioStore 2 API. But before I start showing you the actual APIs, let me give you some background information regarding visual face. Let's go over the concept of a visual face. Visual face is different from face information captured with an infrared camera. It's a credential that captures the user's face with a visual camera. It is only available on devices that support visual face. Currently, these devices are BayStation F2, BioStation 3, and BioEntry W3. There are three methods to add a visual face credential to a user. The first method involves scanning the user's face on a device. Second is to upload an image. Lastly, you can register via email. In this webinar, I'm going to go over the first two options as the majority of the questions I receive are from these two options. So, I will show you how to add visual face credential to a user by scanning your face on a device. This method requires two steps. First, you need to scan your face on a Suprema device. Second, you need to add the scan template to a user. Let's go over each step. The first step, scanning your face on a device uses the following API. This API will scan the face on a device and retrieve a template from it. Instead of going over the details of the API in text, I thought it'll be more helpful to actually show you in Postman how it works. Also, I'll put a link to a detailed article at the end of this webinar that has all the information that I'm explaining right now so that you can look it up later on. I have pulled up Postman now, and here at the top, you can verify that I have put in the corresponding API URL and the method type. This API has a required query parameter, pose sensitivity, where you need to input a number between zero to nine in order to set the sensitivity for the position, angle, and distance of a face while registering the face. Set the sensitivity high if you wish to obtain a detailed face template. In this example, I have put the value of four. There is also a required path variable where you need to input the ID of the device which will be used to scan the face. Once you run the API, the device will prompt you to scan a face. After successfully scanning a face with the device, the API will return with a 200 status code and a response body. This is an example of what a response body will look like. As you can see, the response body will have template ex normalized image value, and it will also have a template array value. We are going to need these values in the next step. Now that we have successfully scanned our face on a Suprema device, and obtain the template values necessary. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is to add the scan template data to a user so that it can be used as the specific user's credentials. We are going to use the following API. This API is used to update the user's information. There are actually a lot of body parameters that you can add depending on what user information you want to edit. Same as the previous step. Let me pull up Postman to better ex explain this step. As you can see here, I have input the URL 
and, it, and also the method of the API. This API has a path variable where you need to input the ID of the user you want to edit. In this case, we are going to put the ID of the user that we want to add the visual face credential to. Now let's take a look at how to construct the request body. This is the basic structure of the request body. For the parameters, we need to input the template EX normalized image value and also the template array value. We are going to find the values from the response body of our previous API. Let's go back to the response body of our previous API. I am going to copy over the template EX normalized image value and paste it in the template EX normalized image value of the current API that we're trying to call. Once again, let's go back to the response body of the previous API call. This time, I'm going to copy over the entire content inside the template array. I am going to paste this value into the template parameter of the request body. Now that we have successfully input all of the necessary parameters, if I call the API, you can verify that we have received a 200 OK status where we have successfully added a visual face credential to a user. This time, let's take a look at how to add a visual face credential to a user by uploading an image via Biostore 2 API. This process requires two steps as well. You need to call an API that will detect the face and retrieve template from the image you upload. Next, you need to call an API to add the extracted template to a user. Before we look at the actual APIs, this process has a prerequisite. You need to prepare a picture that has a user's face and meets the below requirements. The image file format must be JPG, JPEG, PNG, and the maximum size should not exceed 10 megabytes. Also, these images need to be converted to base 64 format. You cannot just put the file name into the parameter. If you do not know how to convert, just search on the internet and there are a lot of websites and programs that will convert image file to base64 format for you. Now that we have prepared an image, let's go to the first step of this process. We need to use the following API, which will check whether the image meets the specification and retrieve a face template from the image. You might have guessed, but let me show you a demo of it through a post-it. As you can see, you can check the API URL and the method right here. This API has one parameter in the body request. Inside the template X picture, parameter, you need to put the image file in base64 format. Right here, I have already prepared an image file and converted it into base64 format. This is the only parameter that will be required for this request body. Once I send this API, you are going to receive a response body that looks like the following. First, you're going to have the image value. And then you're also going to have values called image template and image template two. 
make sure to take note of all of these values as these values are going to be needed in the next step. Next step is to add the extracted template to a user. We are going to use this API to update user information. This is the same API used during the process of adding visual face by scanning your face on a device. However, the parameter data required in the request body is going to be constructed a little differently, so please pay attention in the demo that I'm about to do. Here, you can see that I have put in the following API URL and the method type. Also, as you can see, this requires a path variable where you need to input the ID of the user that you'd like to add the visual face credential to. Now, let's take a look at how to construct the request body. This is the basic structure of the request body. We are going to need to fill in the template ex normalized image and two template ex values right here that each correspond to a different credential bin type. We are going to get all of these information from the response body of our previous API call. Let's go back to the response body of the previous API call. You'll remember the image value. We are going to copy this value and we are going to paste it in the template ex normalized image graph. Next, let's go back to the response body of the previous API. And this time, we are going to copy image template value. This value is going to be pasted into the template ex value, which has the credential bin type of 5. Now, once again, let's go back to the response body of the previous API call. And this time, we're going to copy over the value for image template 2. This value is going to be pasted into the template ex value for credential bin type number nine. Please pay attention to the bin type and the corresponding template ex values. Now that we have constructed the request body, if we send the API, we will once again receive a 200 OK status successful message indicating that the visual face has been successfully added to the user. The process of adding a visual face credential to a user via Biostar2 API might be a little bit confusing, so I've also added links to articles that has all of this information that I went through in this webinar so that you can refer to it in the future. I hope this webinar has been useful and thank you for watching it till the end.